Right, ladies, good evening. What do we think? How are you? Very well, yes. very well, thank you. Nice yes. to see yes. you. Four, please come in. Yes. Yes, all from up north. Yes. 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 Maz, what's on the menu? Pan roasted pigeon, breasted pigeon on a on oh, mushrooms, mushrooms, asparagus, and um, on salad, salad dressing. Right, are you always that slow? Yeah. Damn, <laughs> I'm a fun to catch criminals going at that pace. <laughs> OK, right, starter. Let's do one together. Yeah? yeah? Let's go. <laughs> right, what's the secret about cooking pigeon? Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, exactly. Yeah. Now, they'll be marinated in thyme, garlic. Yeah. yeah. Pigeon in, yeah? And that's the sort of noise you want to hear, yeah? yeah? Just that nice little sizzle. Mushrooms in, yeah? Yeah. Touch of shallots and a little touch of garlic in there, yes? Yeah. yeah. OK? Asparagus in. What's in the vinaigrette? Cherry vinegar. Good. Groundnut oil. Good. And walnut oil. Walnut oil, good. Sprinkle with chives. Right, pigeon out, yeah? That's just going to sit there and rest. Yep. Salad, uh, rocket, some walnuts in there. Yeah. Plate, mushrooms. Yeah. On. Some asparagus on. A little bit of salad on there. It's a warm salad. Yes. And then from the breast, turn it over so it's flat side down and just slice the breast. And then finally, we'll have a little bit of vinaigrette over the end. And look, bingo. Anything complicated there? No, no chef. No, no chef. chef. OK, first order. Come on, girls. OK, on order four, covers table three, yes? Four pigeon salad, four skate, four pan per do, yes? Yes, 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 yes! I like law and order in my kitchen. We all know each other through the police force. I love everything about food. I just, you know, love trying new things and don't get a bum this big without having a passion for food. We're used to uh, people being fiery with us, so if worse comes to the worst, we can always handcuff them to the cooker. Bring it on, Gordon. He's not even going to be able to swear. And if he does, it's public order. He's going down. We're going to sell 150 plates. No problem. Just be very, very careful when you're cooking these, yeah? They overcook in seconds, yeah? Very quickly, with your tongs out. Quickly, good. 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 Five, right, let's go. Out. Come on, Lise. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why did you join the police force? Well, my modelling career never took off, really, so... And you enjoy it? I do, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Full on. it's a rewarding job. Packed with emotion, no? Uh, yeah, it Upsetting. can be. I try and use cooking to get over that. So. Good. <laughs> Service, please. You happy with that, Wait. Maz? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes. So am I. Table 12, let's go. Jamie? Jamie. Hey. How are you? Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Again, Thank well? you for having me back. I'm very Good well. Good to see you. Is this in the way for the shot there? Yes. Shall I move that way? <laughs> right, let's... Uh, well, uh, excuse me, how many have you got now? Three, four, if you count yeah, the one for the uh, show, three, which I do. Okay. <laughs> a month later, you said, Bassett, you're still carrying it around. Yeah, but okay. I had to pick it up today, and I said, I'll pick up Gordon's one, yeah. and they went, which okay. one? I said, didn't Gordon uh, win for the uh, oh, You're an entertainer, you should be winning those. How many mission stars have you got? Seven. Yeah, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I bought them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good to see you again. Lovely to be here. Yes. Thank you for having me back. Um, we enjoyed our starter. The asparagus um, was nice. What about the pigeon? Pigeons are white, but a pigeon belongs in Trafalgar Square. No, it doesn't. That's it just it. There's a woodland pigeon, Jonathan. You were quite a fussy eater. When you were a child, you were sort of... Well, when I was yeah. a child, you know what I would eat? Yep. I would eat eggs. Fine. My brothers called me Egg Boy, and I was in the top bunk as well. Make everyone knows I was like, oh, <laughs> But you must have had something more than sort of eggs, surely. Well, my mum was an OK cook, but, you know, we were... I'm not, you know, pleading poverty yep. here, but we weren't a well-off yep. family. So she'd sometimes Normal. do a casserole at the weekend, but it was just a big old bit of meat yep. simmered, and she used to put a can of baked beans in there and anything she had available. Uh -huh. uh, and that was fine. Or we used to have... I, I used to like chicken and chips when we had that occasion. Yep. You know, but it wasn't... We didn't have much else. We used to have a lot of food that yep. you buy in stores. Like, I remember... You remember Vesta? Yeah, yeah. They used to make the kind of beef risotto. That was the most exotic food I ever had. Right, I want to talk to you about Fanny Craddock. Please do. Amazing woman. And, and this year we launched a campaign to help find a new Fanny Craddock. You're looking for your own Fanny, I understand that, and I applaud <laughs> that. But why not just yeah. do what Morecambe Wise used to do? Go a on. little bit of lippy, a long blonde wig, <laughs> oh, <fuck okay>? <laughs> double bubble, you never know, you might win a BAFTA. <laughs> You're the woman with the man boobs. Phil, I... I've actually not really got man boobs. What I've got, though, is I'm carrying a lot of weight down there. Feel that, feel that down there. Go on. No, feel that's that. a feel that down time. there. Feel no, that, that down that, there. That, that, that... <laughs> <laughs> you know you want a Fanny. <laughs> Um, Fanny Craddock. You were the very last person to actually interview. Yeah, I didn't realise that, and I hope I didn't and finish off. Did the interview go well? I can't really remember that much, so, I, so probably not. Should we have a little look at it? <laughs> JB, please. Let's have a look at this. So, this is you, back in 1987, yeah, as a skinny mini. Your show was the most successful cookery show ever, I think, probably. Yes. What do you think was the key to that success? That I could cook. <laughs>
But I don't believe you had any formal training as a cook, did you? What do you call formal training for being a cook? <laughs> there aren't people like that on TV anymore. No. They really no, no, aren't. No, no. I mean, because you're actually sane, clearly, yeah. and very good at what you do. What kind of advice would you give to any woman out there that's thinking of becoming the next sort of TV cook? What you're looking for, really, is some of the personality, but, but it's a difficult thing because you don't want someone to be false. Well, thousands of them have applied. Well, yeah. Have a quick look at this. Right, so this is, these are amateur fannies? Yeah, the amateur fannies. Ready? <laughs> All I don't know is that your dough should feel like a fat lady's ass. Perfect. Right, with one hand. Why is she in a row? Uh, <laughs> she'd like me to blow. She wants to be like Jella. <laughs> yeah. In here, I've got about 100 grams of chickpea flour. And there you have one of the most delicious. <laughs> <stage>. oh. <laughs> you know, I won't show you my my tits on TV, but I might show you my tattoos. See, look at that. It looks like she's wearing an egg on her head. That's a terrible <laughs> haircut. It's like her hair's on backwards. Straight in there now. I'm tempted to drink it myself, but no, we'll put it in the dish. I yeah. think she might be emotionally damaged. <laughs> I could see that they've all, they're all obviously quite confident. Yes. They've all got different things to work for them against yeah. them. They need to be strong, charismatic, and someone that's not going to melt under the pressure. You want to get one of those female uh, bodybuilders with the long clitorises? <laughs> I'll get your main course sorted. <laughs> fuck you. Hold on! <laughs> You're fucking mad, I'll see you later. Holy shit. The pigeon was lovely, actually. I really like the asparagus with it, as well as the walnuts. Um, one of my friends had the same, obviously, pigeon. It was a bit more cooked, and it was a lot nicer. Right, results, ladies. Starters. OK, GB. OK, here we go. <clears throat> now, ladies, the number of customers that Paid like the lottery. For their starter, it's 34 out of 50. 34? 34. Oh, bad. No Why so little? Um, undercooked. Undercooked? Oh, oh get out. I told you to wear. Pink is perfect. When it's brown, it's fun. I know. Don't go down. Yeah? No, Don't let not. it get to you. We're not. Bounce back. Yes? Yes. Honest stations. Let's go, ladies. Yes? Let's go. Up. Next on the menu. But never mind the scallops. Will my wetsuit stay dry? Why is it like this? When you get to this stage, you're always bursting for a pee. Time for the main course. Mouth-watering roast skate with beetroot and parmesan. That is 100% pig's blood. And I share a bloody awful drink with Janet Street Dracula. Oh, shit. It's fantastic. Welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course. Pan Rossi Skate Ring. Delicious, very, very sweet, easy to get hold of, and more importantly, very cheap. Pat dry, season, hot pan, olive oil. Butter. Now the fish is taking on a completely different colour. Baste. And that butter is on the verge of becoming a Benoisette, a nut brown butter. Beautiful. Slides off. Put it back. Leave that to rest for two minutes. Now the garnish. Lettuce. Salt. Pepper. Balsamic vinegar. Olive oil. Rosemary. 30 seconds. Hot pan. Beetroot. And look at the glaze on that beetroot now. Capers, parmesan, parsley, vinaigrette. As the parmesan starts to melt, take it off. Literally 10 seconds in the pan. Out. And well, that beats spinach any day. And that has to be the perfect way of bringing skate back to life. Pan roasted skate with beetroot and parmesan. Done. Yes, Joe, you had the skate sticking. Yeah. Was the pan hot enough? Uh, because look, no. let me show you something. Look. Yeah, not enough colour. Come on. Okay. If it's boiling, you've got a completely different flavour. Oh no good. Sure. Yeah? Quite sure. thick them, huh? Yeah, they're yes, little big ones then. We like a big one, don't we love? Got to baste them. If you don't baste them, they're not gonna cook on top, yes? Beat root in. Good. Nice. Right. Good, good, good. Watch when you place them in there. Watch. Careful, 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 careful. Woo! Oh, where's okay. them? Fry your brigade when you need them. Watch your fingers, Lisa. 
Lisa, that's nice. Thank you. Beautiful colour. Yes, sure. Come on, Lisa. You're doing very well, Danny. Let's go. Yeah? Are you always looking this fucking miserable? Come on. <laughs> huh? Why is that? When I'm concentrating. When, you're concentrating. when I'm trying to work hard. You like this at work? I always look miserable. Good. Go, please. Let's, like go, 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 let's go. Four more away, yeah? Here we go. It looks lovely. Thank you. Watch out. Here's the food snob with the big gob. In here is a food packed full of vitamin B12, iron and protein, which is produced in Britain, but unbelievably, almost nobody eats it. In fact, we waste 36 million tonnes of it a year, which is a dreadful shame. I'm going to get you all to eat blood. We should eat more of it, but us Brits find the thought of cooking with blood pretty hard to stomach. Now, that is something <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be putting past my lips. To. I think it's the thought of it that, that puts you off straight away. Yeah, if you was going to tell me it was going to be good for you, I would, I, would, I would taste it. Yeah, I would eat it. It does sound a bit sort of like Hammer House of Horror type of approach to cooking. No, it feels a little bit too devil worshipping for me. I'm actually. not a vampire, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It might be out of fashion, but protein-rich pig's blood has traditionally been used in cooking. I'm going to try some of the world's best blood recipes, so I'm here at this abattoir to source some prime, fresh ingredient. As in all abattoirs, the pigs are stunned before being bled. Is that my bucket? Okay. I'm taking my blood to renowned butcher David Lishman to learn how to make the classic British blood dish Black pudding. Great, it's uh, very rare that we actually get fresh blood nowadays. After cooling for a couple of hours, the blood oxidises and turns brown. The blood is mixed with barley, oatmeal, pork fat and lots of herbs and spices and poured into a sausage machine. Are these bits of intestine then? Yeah. yeah. It looks like a kind of um, birth control device. Oh, my word. Lovely. This goes into the boiler yeah. now. Right. OK. For 45 minutes to an hour. Excellent. Good. Nice, firm, mealy British black pudding. Yeah, it's cool. Right, I'll have a bit of that to take home. There's a lot more to cooking with blood than black pudding. Andy Holt is an enthusiastic blood chef who's collected recipes from all over the world. I'm here to learn how to cook his special Italian blood dessert. So we're just mixing the egg and the caster sugar together. What better way to popularise blood with the British than by appealing to our sweet tooth? And into that, we're adding melted chocolate. Just sounds like a chocolate mousse so <laughs> far. Yeah. And then the next thing we're putting in is the blood. Now, why on earth did the Italians dream up making a pudding using blood? In a way, it's a way to, to use up a valuable resource because the blood is actually very good for you. Obviously, it's full of iron, it's uh, full of vitamins. Wow, Andy, look at that. Superb. I'll taste I it. You, you absolutely promise me. I honestly that promise It's not going to bring you. back memories, that squealing pig. Tastes exactly like chocolate mousse. I'm now convinced that blood is not only good for you... It's delicious. Beautiful. ..but it's also tasty. All I've got to do now is persuade Gordon. Right, Gordon, what I want to do for you... Right. ..is Italian pancakes called Romantini. It's like a classic pancake mix, and instead of milk, you've got blood. I've never had a blood pancake, you know that? Are you OK? Yeah. Uh, no water, no milk? No, just no. blood. Get and this is blood. all pig's blood? Bloody hell. And it's not something I donated earlier. No, geez, look at that. It doesn't it's look that nice, does it? It actually looks like melted chocolate, so just yeah. get over it. OK, good God. Jesus. Right, let it cook first before you flip it. I know how to make a so pancake. So, what do you put inside a pancake, or do you actually serve them like that? I think, for the purposes of testing, i.e. Yeah. converting you, yeah. you should have nothing but a blood pancake. Oh, no! Do you know what that looks like? What well, I imagine your scrotum looks like. <laughs> looks a bit You're testicle like. Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, we ready? Yeah, I am to the board. Look uh, at that. Just the smell of it though. Uh, it actually smells like fried blood. It smells nice. It smells, it smells nice. nice. Just taste what? it. 
It's very rubbery. Oh, huh? moaning. You can't taste the blood. Did you swallow that? Gordon! That is. I finally come good. up with something you won't eat. There's nothing, absolutely that nothing wrong with it's that. It's fucking disgusting. Janet. I don't have a problem with it. As I couldn't persuade you to eat the pancake, how about a shot of blood? <laughs> you're <laughs> turning like... fucking. Hey, seriously, Cheers. you're. Cheers, Golden. And that is 100% pig's blood. Did you swallow that? You're possessed. <laughs> Drink it. You put lead in your pencil. Oh, shit. It's fantastic. You, God, you've you're lost not it. the man I thought you were. Now, Janet, I know you're a pensioner, but now you're a blood-sucking pensioner. Janet, that is not nice. Fucking... Fucking vampire. No chance. Oh. I'm heading down the Dorset coast to go diving. It's one of my all-time favourite foods. Scots. No speed cameras here, is there? Fuck them. I adore scallops. And I've served them on all my menus. But most of them are fished on a commercial scale, using dredging which can damage the seabed. The sustainable way to catch them is to go diving and pick them up by hand, which is what I'm going to do today. Hand dive scallop, especially, is something that is considered a bit of a jewel in the crown. Phenomenal. I'm off to meet Tom Whittle in Weymouth, who's been diving for scallops since he was 12. Have you got any shoes? Yeah, I've got some somewhere. Do you never wear them? <laughs> right, uh, temperature-wise, what's it going to be like down there? 14 degrees, if we're lucky. Yeah? Yeah. If we're lucky? Yeah. Serious. Cheers. And are they um, in abundance? It depends sort of where you go, but normally what you do is basically get down there, mm -hmm. and if there's tons, then you just work them. Yeah. And if there's none, then you just swim like fuck until you find them. That's bad. Good. Ready yeah, to get the dangly bits. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> We're heading out to the Black Hawk wreck, where we'll start our dive. Marine life congregates on wrecks, and nearby, there's an abundance of scallops. How big are they? Average size, probably about that here. Ready? About that. Because in um, London at the moment, uh, we're getting them from the south coast and the west coast, but uh, costing about three pounds fifty, four pounds each. 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 And have to start commercial scallop <laughs> The reason that hand dive scallops are so expensive is that they are incredibly hard to catch, and a diver will only pick up a fraction of the haul of a commercial fisherman. Um, they're difficult to see, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they can be. I mean, especially uh, if they've buried themselves into the sand. But it's all about getting your eye into it. Yeah. Why is it like this? When you get to this stage, you're always bursting for a pee. It's, huh? it's the way that it huh? is. It's, it's the rule of the game. Unbelievable. I feel like that fucking condom again. <laughs> uh, what is it with these things? Visibility down here today is terrible, which makes spotting scallops that are nestled into the sand almost impossible. Ha, ha, ha.
cool, Jesus. <laughs> Elegant, isn't it? Well done. Well done yourself. Thanks. <laughs> Good quality scallops. Huh? Lovely. Right, beach time. Tom normally saves his scallops for supper, but I want to eat mine straight away. The fresher, the better. Right. Fantastic. They look amazing. I'm going to open them and clean them, yeah? So, a scallop tartare, yeah? Basically, a raw diced scallop mixed with lime, yeah? Chervil, and then a little bit of creme fraiche and mascarpone cheese, mm -hmm. yeah? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Dive, open the scallop, and then eat. But look, I mean, they're still pulsating now. I feel and it's still... It's extraordinary. Mix some creme fraiche with mascarpone cheese, lime zest, lime juice, some chervil and salt and pepper. Right, dice the scallops. In. And all we do now is just fold that in there. It's so exciting eating raw scallops. So I'm going to serve the scallop tartare inside the lettuce leaf. So just open up the heart of the baby gem lettuce. It's quite a robust leaf, this, so it can take the scallop. Absolutely delicious. And there we are. A very simple scallop tartare. Fire away, buddy. Nice ah. one. Uh, Cheers. Very hell. They are so tasty. Ah. Ten times better to use hand dive and not dredged. And I'd rather pay double for a hand dive, yeah, than cheap dredged scallops that taste of grit. Cheers. Cheers. Scallops away. First time I had skates, and the, the fish was great. So disappointing. And just greasy. The beetroot was gorgeous. It had little bits of cheese in, which gave a really unusual flavour. OK, go on, ladies. Results of the main course, right, yes? Come on, ladies. Matt, yes. how do you think you did? I thought you did all right. 29 out of 50. Oh, oh, nice. oh. Yes. What? Why? Uh, the one just been big reason, too greasy. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I, I personally felt you did a fucking good job. You can pull it back, yes, Come on, ladies. with the dessert, yes. Next on the menu, Sarah Cox reveals all in the recipe challenge. But instead, I asked the entire table if we could all have a gangbang. I give Olympic athletes a run for their money with my fast food. And Jonathan Ross files a police complaint. You want to suck my what? <laughs> I said you want Hold to on, I'm being harassed. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time for another celebrity challenge, and it's time for me also to beat Sarah Cox. Confident? To meet me or beat me? Uh, beat you. Beat me, all right. Uh, nice to meet you. Yes, I am quite confident, yes. actually. Yes, that's your board there. Okay, Off you go, madam. Good luck. Yes? Yes, good luck to you too, sir. So, Sarah's making a chili con carne. I'm doing exactly the same. Minced beef, um, fresh oregano, um, paprika, sweet paprika, kidney beans, slightly pure in the garlic so it's not so intense, and then finished with really nice vine tomato so it gives that really nice, sort of rich, dark, peppery flavour, but not too spicy. So for Sarah's chilli special, <laughs> chopped onion, bit of chopped garlic, might chuck in a bit of red pepper, some uh, good beef here. I don't believe it's Hereford, but it is British beef. Good. We've got a bit of tomato puree, might chuck in a bit of wine. Chopped tomatoes, kidney beans. I can't, it's like the bung in method, basically. I just bung it all in, do that, and then drink a bit of wine. Uh, and my secret ingredient, baked beans. Uh, you've got an amazing food background. Your father's a, a beef farmer in Bolton, is that right? He certainly is. He does it mainly for the breeding. Really? You know, I think uh -huh. he'll send one in when he's got a big farm bill. And so, so does he have to have a collection of bull semen every other month? Well, he's got a good stock bull and he, got, he imports them from Canada and that. Oh, really? He's got longer legs or something. So you grew up eating lots of meat, yes? Well, yeah. Pigs, cows. Did you ever get attached to them? Yeah, I really did. I really did really? the piglets. Because the like, Charlotte's Web was all the rage, wasn't it? Now, I know it sounds like I need therapy from this story, but I did actually used to go to the, to the abattoir with my dad when he'd loaded all the pigs in. Oh, really? And I used to cry myself to sleep and then wake up when it was all over. You know, I never went into the abattoir, I don't no? think. No, but the nice thing about it, you understood exactly from an early age where meat yeah. comes from. Yeah, exactly. 
So I've got lambs in the back garden. The main <laughs> objective is to get the kids up to speed exactly, A, where it comes from, and B, I'm in that sort of yeah. debatable mood whether or not to take them to the abattoir and show them the final thing. Uh, I wouldn't. Be expensive, though, years of therapy that you have to pay for. Either that or they're going to turn out to be fucking vegetarians, aren't they? <laughs> oh, I can hear some noise in your pan, I'm happy. Huh? It's sizzling. No, it's, it's sizzling. Alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive, it's in there. So you've got onions, garlic, yeah. beef in there. What else is in there? Uh, there's my fresh chilli in there. Uh -huh. I'm going to brown this beef off and then I'm going to whack in a glass of red wine and let that bubble away. I'm using uh, Liam Perrin. What's your secret ingredient? I've got a tin of baked beans. You're using what? A tin of baked beans. A tin of baked beans? Yeah, no. So, red wine with baked beans. I can't wait to taste it, you know that? <laughs> the one thing I've always admired about you, you know that, mm. is you're a bit like me, you speak your mind. Yeah. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever said in your entire life? <laughs> oh, no, there was... My mum had taken out all the staff from her pub on the Christmas meal. I meant for us to go all go out and dance, but instead I asked the entire table if we could all have a gangbang. <laughs> and everyone just went completely silent. And my mum just went ashen, and I didn't know what I meant. And I still, to this day, I kind of meant there's a word out there that isn't that. But at the ripe old age of 32 now, you're fully aware of what a gangbang is now, don't you? Well, yeah? Yeah, I mean, not from personal experience, obviously, but... No, no, I, no, no. I learned quickly after, actually, what it was, and I was like, oh, right. I'm now going to add my uh, tomatoes. These big beef tomatoes are... Perfect. They're very juicy and they're full of flavour. So with tomatoes, is it fine to, to keep the skin on? Because I always want to put fresh tomato in and then I think, oh, do I have to dunk them in boiling water and get the skin off? For something like a chilli, something easy and straightforward like that, keeping the skin on is absolutely fine, you know that? Right, cool. You've got a great figure, you're very slim. Do you watch carefully what you eat or do you just sort of work out at the same time? I love food. Yep. I can be quite happily eating breakfast and I'll be planning what I want for lunch and what I want for dinner. You eat well? Yeah. I didn't. I used to model and I didn't eat well at all. I know. Then. Yeah, I was like seven and a half stone. It was ridiculous. Like my knees were faster than my thighs. I was like ninety. My I God. lived on like you know Marlboro lights and coffee. How long were we modelling for? Oh, a couple of years. I mean, you know, were that successful? I still managed to fit in some shifts behind my mum's bar at the pub. You travelled across the world. Uh, modelled in yeah in Seoul in South Korea on two trips. Uh huh. Did they ever uh, try to make you eat a dog out there in terms of their... I did obscure... eat dog. I you didn't did. know I'd eaten dog until I got to the joint of the bone and then yeah. I realised it wasn't chicken because it was kind of a different... Yeah, structure. Bone. What did it taste of? It tasted just deep-fried meat, like, yeah. kind of like chicken, yeah. really. So they both simmer now for 20 minutes, OK? Then the blind tasters will taste them and you'll lose. Huh? <laughs> Fast food doesn't have to mean baked beans. <laughs> I've run eight marathons, 26 long, hard miles each. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that eating right is just as important as the training. So you'd think that two super-fast athletes training for the Olympics would be eating a varied diet in between training. But they're not. And their excuse is they say they've got no time. We train in the morning for three or four hours, you know, maybe have half an hour for lunch. Um, and then back again, training in the afternoon. So it's, uh, and that's six days a week, so it's a busy schedule. Lunchtime's a struggle, because it's on the rush, it's on the go, and uh, it is just food for fuel. There's nothing interesting about it at all. All I eat is just a ready-made pasta pot. It's literally just pasta mixed with a bit of chicken, a bit of sauce. Just because we're training for the Olympics, we don't need anything special in particular. We just need to eat good amounts of the right stuff. I want to learn how to cook something nice, quick, tasty, and I want to be able to impress my girlfriend that I can actually cook. So I've come to meet best mates Chris and Andy to help them be as fast in the kitchen as they are on the track. Lightning. That looked bloody fast, yeah? Um, <laughs> how many times a day do you train? Twice a day. Twice a day. Twice a day. Five days a week? Six days a week. Six days a week. I mean, that's extraordinary for one goal, an yeah. Olympic gold. That's yeah, the old right. It's the Olympics, though, isn't it? Yeah. Who's the fastest? Well, he won't deny it, it's me. <laughs> His personal best is better, but the last time we raced, Live TV. Yeah, you're gonna hear that. I took him out. I took him out. I took him out. Would you do me a favour? I will. Take me out. I'll, I'll I want to see you. just how fast you are. Yeah. Hey, yeah you sure? 15 stone. <laughs> 40 enough. years of age. Yeah. <laughs> so go easy on the old man. Yes. I would. Good luck. Let's go. Yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh yeah. shit. I felt like fucking Shrek going over there, you know that? <laughs> I'll try the sprinting, you know that? Sprinting's better. So it's all in the posture? Posture, yeah? Yeah. Sprinting's better. So, go! Up to all. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say I'll beat two champions. What is that? Don't fuck around. Come on, go. Don't fuck around. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just getting excited. <laughs> on your marts. Go! <laughs> Shit! 
shit. <laughs> you know I'm fucked. <laughs> now, you just confirmed you're fast on the track. I'm going to show you how to be fast in the kitchen. Ready? Right. When you caught your breath. When I caught my breath, yeah. <laughs> Right, time-wise lunch, you've got, what, half an hour? Half an hour, Tom. Max, yeah. yeah? Run me through a normal lunch. What did you have yesterday? Pasta pot. And that's it? That's it. A pasta pot? That's a pasta pot. I mean, it looks boring. It is boring. Yes. It is you boring. must be <laughs> bored with it by now, no? Gordon, I am fed up with it. Pasta doesn't have to be boring, you know that. So I'm going to come up with three very exciting pasta dishes. We're going to be fast, furious and delicious. First recipe. Spaghetti, yeah. wine tomato sauce, basil, chilli and finish with prawns. Pasta is the ultimate fast food and something I eat when I'm training for the marathon. How would you find that, good? How would you find the marathon? Yeah, no, it was tough. Yeah, very tough. There she goes. So, in the time it takes to cook that spaghetti, this sauce is ready. Yeah. It is chilly now, Andy. Yeah. A little tip, just give it a roll like that. Right. This releases the seeds so you can discard them easily. Andy, basil in, please. I mean, you yeah. guys eat well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to follow a strict diet, do you? No, everything in moderation, that's what, you know, that's what yeah. it's about. See, that's the perfect kind of food that, that we need. Right, recipe two, even faster, yeah? Concini pasta, pancetta, leeks and mushrooms. And if you can't get hold of pancetta, smoked bacon is absolutely fine. Chop the leeks finely and add to the bacon. I mean, the ultimate goal is um, a gold medal in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. Or London. London would be better. Or win one in Beijing and defend it in London. I mean, the chance yeah, of defending yeah, yeah. it in your hometown. Yeah. Oh, my. And uh, your own country ho hosting the Olympics. After three minutes, add some creme fraiche, which lightens the dish. That's fast, isn't it? Add some grated parmesan and finish with chopped parsley. That's the kind of time scale that we're working on, so yeah. that's perfect. Recipe three. This one's with panic. Chicken, goat cheese, pine nuts and runner beans. Good. Runner beans in. Garlic. Pine nuts in. OK, rosemary on there, please, Chris. Take the ingredients out of the pan and prepare the chicken. Chicken breast, I'm going to butterfly it, OK? Let's keep the knife nice and flat and just open it up. Cutting the chicken this way leaves the breast thinner and therefore it cooks quicker. Wow, that looks, that looks, that's beautiful. That's a really so, nice dry ghost cheese. And at work, we keep them in the freezer. And perfect for finishing pasta. It's a great tip, because they never go off. This is not boring, is it? Oh, not, not at all. all. No. We can't rely on time as an excuse to not look after yourselves. No. no. All three you happy with? Of course. Yeah. This one I like particularly. We've got the World Championship coming up. We have, yeah. At the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just hope the funk your times are faster <laughs> at the World Championship. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know that. <laughs> Golden, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Well, it was fine. And one, one time all, when it all arrived, it was nice. Do you want <laughs> our honest opinion, though? Of course I want your honest opinion. The you... cheese flavour overpowered the fish. If you must use the parmesan... Next time. Great the fuck up. Oh. All right? Oh. We don't want cubes of parmesan on there. Simple produce, yep. simply prepared. Are you going to pay for it? Yes. That's the most important. Not everyone happy? on the table is, but I will. Oh, my God. What, you're you not think? paying for them all? <laughs> you're telling me how it should be done. Yes, that's yeah. how it should be done. Fuck it. Come with me, yeah? Two seconds. Yeah? You, want, kitchen, you yeah? want a lesson? Yeah, I'll give, absolutely. You want a lesson? Definitely, yes. It. Here we go. Let's go. Up. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Right, ladies, this is our Moni Diner. Cute. To make up, yeah, for these negativity, he's going to give us a hand with the dessert. Yes, let me get that one, yes. Why don't we it? Check it off. Right. Here we go. This is like something from, like, the new romantic period. Ladies, you're going to have to help him. Right. Right. Ready? Does this turn you on? Huh? Jill, he needs locking up. Time for dessert, one of my favourites. Can you stop eating the fucking peaches, please, yeah? Pampo do with caramelised peaches, basically posh eggy bread. And the secret behind this, of course, is using old bread. If you use old bread, it doesn't absorb all the nice egg mixture and it gets nice and crisp on the outside. Peaches. Hot pan. Sugar. The secret now is to get a little bit of colour on the peaches, but not getting the caramel too dark. Roast. Once we've got the colour on the peaches, then we're going to start adding the butter. Basil. Now, the basil just perfumes the caramel and just gives it this really nice, light, sweet, summery flavour. Out. The sauce for the pan perdu. A really nice, fresh, vibrant raspberry coulis. Sugar. Lemon. 
straight on the mixer, blitz. And then get the bottom of your ladle and just run that around. Sieve. Lovely. Eggy bread is very, very simple. Eggs. Vanilla. Smell. Absolutely delicious. Ice and sugar. Milk. Cream. Whisk. So we've got this really nice, sweetened, fresh vanilla custard. Mint. That's ready for the brioche. I'm going to cut lengthways. Nice, big, long slices. Hot pan. Bread in. And then back out. Not too long. Into the pan. Up and over. And it's literally done in seconds. Get my coolie down one side. Mint. Icing sugar. Pan perdu with caramelised peaches and raspberry coulis. Done. That is the perfect summer on a plate. Let's do one at a time and we'll do it together, yes? One is that, slice. Is that being on the generation game of my dad? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay. Well, you know that. uh, in nicely. Beautiful. Get peaches in. That's it, you caramelise them in. Good. Good. Yeah, but they still right, ladies, let's go. Oh, okay. OK, good. That's nice. Mine's ready, Chef. Yeah, right, good. On to the board, please. Right, Jonathan, you're going to do the bread. Yes. Yeah, the girl's going to do the well, peaches. So keep cooking. Yeah. Absolutely. I've just done no, one. No, no, hold on. We've got 49 more to do. Oh, Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of battle. If I wanted to work for a living... Just, just a little bit. I wouldn't have bought my bath to it. Right, ladies, let's go. Joe, keep that stuff. It's hot in here, isn't it? Yeah. Jonathan, trust me, you've lost weight already. You've only been here no, five well, this minutes. is easy. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was going to be difficult. Right, Lisa, that's too burnt there now, yeah? Down. Yes? Not that. That's too dark there, yeah? Quick, go on in again. Jonathan, keep it going, yes? Thank you, Gordon. Yes, Chef. Thank I don't you. mind saying yes, Chef, but saying hi, Wamsey, I draw the line out. <laughs> chef, I made a smiley <laughs> face with the butter in my pan. <laughs> Here we go. So <laughs> hot in there, isn't it, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> I've lost about three stone. Well, I think I found it. A little bit of cream on top, Maz. OK, that's done. Up. Gordon, are you happy with these? Yep. Are you happy with them? Yeah. Fresh basil on there? Fresh. Five, yes. Four. Service, please. Surely they've eaten enough out there, the greedy pigs, haven't they? So, I am so happy you're sweating. Last time we did that, you were interviewing Fanny Craddock. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're looking good, Lisa. You've perfected it now. Uh, hasn't she? Uh? Do you want us to come and cook yeah, for you? That's fine. I'll, I'll do, do you six, want to, yeah. Do you want to suck okay, them no. one? No. <laughs> well, said, you hold on, I'm being harassed. <laughs> I said, do you want me to come and cook for you? Oh, come and cook for you. Oh, that's a far less interesting proposition. <laughs> now, we've got four more tables to send, yes? And we must have done 50 now. Come on. Come on, Jonathan. What? Four, five. Your standards Let's are go. going. I'm getting tired. Next on the menu, Sarah and I await the final verdict. How'd it go? Uh, we, we went very well. My lamb Gavin says goodbye to his mum. <laughs> and Jonathan Ross joins the police lineup. This is a big moment. Bring it on, bring it on. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out who's won the recipe challenge and who's coxed it up. Oh, Ready? see what you did there. It's very good. Right, generous portion, yes, no skimping. And we'll plate it up, shall we? Okay. Rice is there. Yeah. Make a well in the middle, or you do. That's exactly. Now, feeling confident? Yeah. Do you serve sour cream? No, I don't. No? Right, you happy with that? Can I take this home and freeze it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, John Baptiste, please. Now, sour cream. <laughs> Spoon it on. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Sarah's? Gordon's. Good. Ali. Oh. Hi. Hello. How are Hello. you? Very okay. well, thank you. Here we go. First dish. And dish number two. Bon appétit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. It's nice, thick sauce. It is. Mm. Not too spicy, though. It's quite sweet. It doesn't oh. actually taste like it's got that much chilli in it. And I think honest. they're baked beans. Yeah. They do yeah, look like baked you, beans. That's, that's, what you, that's what you can taste mm. in it. Sort of like earthy flavour that in it. That tastes more like the tomatoes that they're bringing the flavour through. I detect quite a lot of salt in this. Uh, oh, no, it's right. Don't look all smug <laughs> and arrogant. And... <laughs> Sorry, Gordon. Thank you. 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 Very, very well. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. It always goes well. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Gordon. Oh, yeah! Yes! <laughs> Christ almighty! Oh, dear! Well done. Well done. You know, uh, well done. Thank you. Do me a favour. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off out of my kitchen. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, my Thank darling. You.
I'm still no closer to finding out what happened to Charlotte. But I've now got to concentrate on getting Gavin back home. Farmer May has come to help me relocate him. Yeah, no problem. What a fucking nightmare, right. though. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? Uh, I didn't expect it's that at all. Yeah, uh. it was awful. Well, I'm afraid you lose some in farming, I'm afraid. A quick look on uh, the three. You know, these don't look damaged at all, you know. They haven't got hold of these. So you're happy with their condition? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah they're, they're looking well. Gavin's not enough to feed 50 diners at Claridge's, so to keep him company and crucially give me enough meat for my restaurant, May's brought me two new lambs. Fuck it. At 13 weeks, Gavin is getting too old to keep suckling from his mother, so he has to be weaned or separated from the parent. Splitting up a lamb and its mother is a harsh reality of farming. So it's going to be a bit of a peculiar... Yeah, you can... It's five minutes for him, no? Yeah. He's, you know, he's calling, they're calling for each other now. And then uh, we'll put those two to the trailer and yeah. we'll be going to send the ways. May has taken the ewes back to Wales. Drive carefully, yes. OK, good call. Take care. Thank you. And I'm taking the lambs to my garden in London, where Hugh Furley Whittingstall is waiting. You've now got the situation where these two new incomers, they're used to the Welsh hills. I'm not going to send them anywhere else. They're staying in my back garden. What you have to hope yeah. is that um, he's going to teach them... Yeah. ..how to stay calm. ..how to stay calm in suburbia. Welcome home. Listen, unfortunately, we've got some bad news to explain. Charlotte got eaten. Eaten by what? We don't know. It may be a dog or a wild cat. It's a white one. She uh. thinks it was her cat. Listen, I'm not blaming your cat for eating them, OK? <laughs> no? Cool, oh, dear. They seem to be settling down well. Huh? Su I think they're settling down all right. And I think the really encouraging thing is that they look like a trio already. That's a little flock you've got there. A nice little flock of three. Yep. You can tell which one is the original. Very easy to identify. Look, Gavin's got the full tail. And the other two girls are... Not hard to tell them apart. No, it's know. not hard at all. You know what we did last time I was here, when, yes. when, when Gavin was only small? Yes. We gave Charlotte and Gavin a, a hill. That's right. I think we've got to give him a bigger hill. Hugh's pulling out all the stops to make sure the lambs are as happy as possible in their final weeks. Over here, but Nice, that's a snug fit. Yeah. Not this bloody roof again. Is that the front? Could be. Yeah, Jack. Or is it the back? Sure. Let's get the grass on the roof. <laughs> Should end up with Utopia. Gordon, just for me, make a noise like oh, a sheep. Meh! Meh! Just say meh! Get some more glass! Oh, just go on, just just you. Me. Oh. There you go. Let that guy get down! <laughs> Check it out. Phase one. <laughs> that's your man, isn't it? Yeah, that's Gavin, yeah. He's home. Do you still think I'm mad? <laughs> Later that evening, all three lambs finally reached the top of the mountain. How cool is that? Huh? Cool. Are you not happy? What do you think? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, but you're not happy about your grass. That will grow. Listen, grass grow, but... will always grow. Yeah. And lamb is delicious. <laughs> That's the only thing you've got to think about tonight when you get back to bed. They'll hear yeah? you. Last tables, yes. Where to go? Jonathan, yes. Please. All right, six are the best six. now, yes. Six, six, six are the best. Okay. Here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Don't do that to me. Look. This is your table, this. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Raspberry, <laughs> please. Pop. Nice. Ladies. Oh, well fun. done. That was fast. I've never seen you work so hard. And look at this. Oh, dear. 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 Basil really complimented it. It's not something that I would think of putting with a dessert, but it was great. I loved it. Definitely pay for this. I'm definitely happy to get it as well. OK, GB, yes? Yeah. Come on. So, ladies, for the starter, 34 out of 50, yeah? Yes, yeah. Yeah? Pretty good, yeah? Not perfect, but not bad, yes? Main course, 29 out of 50, not good enough. This, yes, is a big moment. Bring it on, bring it on. Come on. Ladies, for dessert, Yes. <laughs> Out of 50 diners, 48 have agreed to pay. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Well done, well done, well done. Yeah! Oh, you got buns. Even well done, hindered well done, by Johnny Ross in the kitchen. Well done. Bloody good work. You know that. Fucking good work. The total is, yeah, out of 150, is 111. I'm so sorry. 
Oh. You will not be coming back to Claridge. The second best so far. Oh. Uh, fucking close, it's yes? Yeah, we've well done, well done, well done. Decent recipe. You've earned the right to remain silent now. <laughs> Fuck off for a beer, yes? Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Good work. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Great. Joe, well done, well done. Well done. Huh? Thank you so much, yeah? Hey, it was great fun, fun. thank you. you. I'll do it again next week, uh, but don't put fucking cheese on everything. What's wrong with you, eh? <laughs> simple produce, simply prepared. <laughs> Fuck off, Gallery. Get out. Out, out, out.